Hello there. This is Buck Denver, here talking with Phil Vischer, creator of Veggie Tales and the new DVD series, What's in the Bible? Um, Phil, can you describe the nature of secular television for young children today? TV for young kids today has really changed a lot, especially since I was a kid. But even when my kids were kids, about 20 years ago, uh, there was basically for preschool shows, there was PBS. And you had Mr. Rogers, you had uh, Barney had just started, and Sesame Street. Uh, today, it's a whole different world. They've got, you know, Cartoon Network, they've got the Disney Channel, uh, they've got Nickelodeon 24-7 with great original shows around the clock. Also, though, these shows in general, while there are some that parents might find objectionable, for the most part, these shows, they have consultants, educational consultants, and they're pro-social, and they're pro-environment, and they teach recycling, and they generally try to model pretty good behavior. What concerns me about the world that we've created for our kids you know, on Nickelodeon, on the Disney Channel, is that it's a world where you can be a good person without any need for God. Should Christian parents be concerned about this? I think Christian parents do need to be concerned about the lack of God on kids' television uh, because we're trying to raise our kids with God. And it's what we're creating is a, a compartmentalized world for our kids where they go to church on Sunday morning and God exists. And we talk about God and we sing about God and everything is about God. And then they come home and they turn on the TV and for the rest of the week God is gone. Where did VeggieTales and the competing products that followed it fit into teaching children about Christianity? So 20 years ago, when we launched VeggieTales, parents were looking for alternatives. They weren't happy just with the shows they could get on, on TV, and there weren't very many shows for kids on TV. There weren't 24-hour kids' cable networks yet. So they were very excited about VeggieTales, and they were very excited to be able to share Bible stories with their kids, try to pass on their values. And the format of VeggieTales is basically retell a Bible story, uh, wrap it up with a verse, and pull a value out of it, a Christian lesson about thankfulness or kindness or forgiveness or, or you name it. And parents were ecstatic about that. But after about 10 years of writing VeggieTales, I started to look back and think, wait a minute, am I trying to convince kids to behave Christianly without actually teaching them Christianity? And that was kind of a big question for me to wrestle with. I mean, I was, I was trying to convince kids, oh, we need to be more thank thankful, we need to be more forgiving, we need to be more kind. What I wasn't doing was explaining what's the role of the Holy Spirit in helping you to be more thankful, forgiving, and kind. And why can I be forgiving? Has God forgiven me? If so, from what and why? Mm. So I became very concerned that uh, kids needed more than just stories, that we were reducing the Bible to a collection of, of folk tales rather than a worldview, rather than a belief system that changes how you look at everything. Why do so many teens leave the church when they go to college? So as I was wrestling with this, with, with how we seem to be teaching Bible stories but not the Bible, I started to look at some of the research. Uh, for example, today, according to the latest research, 65% of Christian kids raised in the church stop attending church within two years of graduating from high school. They walk away from the church. And I started looking at it and saying, well, why? You know, we have so many amazing resources. We're teaching them all these great Bible stories. They've grown up with veggie tales, for heaven's sake. Why are they walking away? And I became more and more concerned. It's because they really don't understand how Christianity changes your life. And that's something that, to be quite honest, we never taught in veggie tales. And we taught about thankfulness and, and forgiveness and kindness. And you know, we taught Christian values. We didn't teach Christianity. And I was kind of shocked when I realized that. I was like, good heavens, we're losing them because they don't know their faith. They know stories. Where does what's in the Bible fit into teaching young families? So to keep kids from walking away from their faith, uh, to try to explain their faith more deeply, I realized I needed a new uh, veggie tales, if you will. I needed to start with a clean piece of paper and say, okay, how do we teach not just Christian values, but Christianity? How do we explain not just Bible stories, but the story of the Bible? How do we do that in an entertaining way um, that can engage a whole family, not just kids, because some of their parents need to hear it too, or at least be reminded about it again. How can we do that in such an entertaining way that kids will prefer it to 
Hannah Montana uh, to High School Musical, that they'll actually sit down and learn their theology in a really fun, engaging way so that there's no way they could reach adulthood and not understand what it means to be a Christian and, what, and how a Christian worldview completely changes how you look at your life. That's what's in the Bible. Why are you using puppets instead of high-tech animation? Here's the deal. When we started uh, 20 years ago with Veggie Tales, I mean, I was a computer animator. Uh, most kids had never seen computer animation before. So I could do the most simple, rudimentary computer animation, which is really what Veggie Tales was, about the simplest thing I could come up with. Um, and kids would say, oh, that's so cool. You know, this was five years before Toy Story, the first Pixar movie. So it was a very simple time and it was relatively easy to do very low budget simple computer animation and get kids attention. So I went back to my childhood. I, I made my first animated film when I was eight. Um, but before then I started playing with puppets when I was about six. And uh, my two big influences creatively were Walt Disney and Jim Henson. So I thought, okay, well, maybe it's time to pull out the Jim Henson thing. What if, you know, Sesame Street and The Muppet Show combined for the purpose of teaching Sunday school, of taking kids to seminary? What would that be like? And it is a whole lot of fun. Why is family-oriented television non-existent today? And why is it important to have this? Putting the whole family together, advertisers get a little confused about that. So we've kind of lost the desire, even, from the TV side to have all family viewing, which is really sad. I mean, it's on so many levels. It was so much fun to watch specials when I was a kid with my whole family in front of the TV. Christmas specials, Charlie Brown Christmas special, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Hey, it's coming on, everybody, gather around. We've kind of lost that. Um, I wanted to bring it back. And particularly because we're doing something that's so educational and so important to Christian families. If I can create a show where a whole family is really motivated to sit down and watch it together, I'm teaching the whole family. Everybody is learning the same thing at the same time, and the parents can then help their kids understand it. They can discuss it around the table, uh, and that's, I think there's a huge benefit in bringing families back together around the TV to learn something together. What have you got coming out this fall? So, this fall, we've got two new shows coming out. We have uh, What's in the Bible, number six, and we also have a Christmas special. Uh -huh. A Christmas special called Buck Denver Asks Why Do We Call It Christmas, which is a really cool show because you're probably saying, oh, great, you know, another Christmas special. That's the last thing we need. And, you know, I mean, VeggieTales, they've done four or five Christmas specials already. Everybody does Christmas specials. They all tend to be kind of the same. A Christmas-like story ending with, oh, we learned the real meaning of Christmas. It's Jesus. Not all that other stuff. Ignore all that other stuff. It's Jesus. Okay. Great, we've heard that 150 times. What we're trying to do here is, no, let's talk about all this. Rather than just ignoring secular Christmas traditions, let's explain them and let's show how virtually every one of them actually points back in some way to Jesus. I think people are really gonna be surprised when you look at things like Christmas trees and stockings and, and Santa Claus and how does all this stuff, where did it come from? And does it really all point back to Jesus? I think this could really affect how your family celebrates Christmas. How has the message of faith gotten so detached from the holiday? Christmas, when we talk about it in a church context, it's one holiday. When we watch it on TV or in a movie, or sometimes even when we're celebrating at home, it's a completely different holiday. You know, it's, it's Jesus Christmas versus Santa Christmas. Two whole different traditions, different decorations, different everything. And it's so confusing for kids that what I really wanted to do was bring these together and unwrap it all and explain how it all actually connects and it all actually points back to Jesus. Um, I think that's a huge benefit for families to bring these traditions together and explain them so we know why we hang stockings, so we know why we have Christmas trees, and we know how all of this stuff points back to a little baby that was born in Bethlehem. How can parents compete with Santa and bring religion back to Christmas? I think when we understand who Santa really was, where that tradition came from, uh, it's easy to bring him together into a celebration of Jesus' birthday. 
It just takes explanation. If you can explain it to your kids too, then they'll get it. When they see Santa, you see a Salvation Army Santa Claus, you realize he's pointing back to a guy in 300 AD who kind of dressed like that, kind of looked like that, uh, but his whole life was about showing God's love to the poor. Suddenly, it all makes sense. And I think that's a great way to kind of win back Christmas from the purely secular that says, oh, it's all about Santa and has nothing to do with Jesus. You can actually say, oh, no, it is partly about Santa, but that has everything to do with Jesus. Let me explain to you. What, if anything, would a non-Christian family get out of watching this special? Actually, it could be very interesting for non-Christian families to watch this episode, our Christmas special, because you're going to learn all sorts of things about the history of Christmas, how we got it, why it's in the shape it's in, and and how all these traditions uh, fit together, how they were all created. I think there's lots in there that everyone will find interesting. What has the response to What's in the Bible been since you launched it last year? The response to What's in the Bible has really been amazing because no one has ever seen a series like this. You know, this is the Muppets going to seminary. This this is just, it's amazingly educational. Probably the biggest reaction is even from parents, even from grad students at Christian colleges. I can't believe how much I learned about the Bible. And it was so much fun to learn it. I mean, if we can do that, if we can make learning about the Bible fun, if we can make bringing uh, knowledge of our faith uh, to life in a fun way, we can change the next generation. And we need a generation of Christian kids that know their faith and know what it looks like to live it out before the eyes of a watching world. We need something like what's in the Bible to help do that. If there's one message you'd like to get across to parents about what's in the Bible, what would it be? Learning the Bible doesn't need to be that hard. We've really made it out to be, you know, oh, you're going to have to go to college, you're going to have to go to seminary. Well, actually, if you're not going into the ministry, you probably shouldn't even try. It's just too hard. It's not. It's not that hard. We, we have all the information. So what we're doing is unlocking all that great information from the commentaries and the study Bibles and seminaries and all that and putting it into a form where a whole family can sit down and watch it together. And you can all learn the Bible in more depth than you ever thought possible sitting on your couch with your kids, and they will learn it too. That's what you need to know about what's in the Bible. Fascinating. Well, this has been Buck Denver talking with Phil Vischer.